Oh, hey. So, before we start the compounding process, um, we're going to go over some guidelines that will help make it a little bit more simple um, and help reduce the risk of any errors or omissions or contaminants happening in your compounding process. So first and foremost, when you're compounding, you want to make sure that you're working on one batch or one patient at a time. You'll, you'll look at that patient, you'll look at that batch, and then you go to the compounding record and you'll do your, comp, uh, your calculations. And you'll make sure that you have all the supplies you need, the medications, the diluents, uh, any other cleaning supplies that are necessary. When you have those supplies gathered, you're going to get an independent double check from a pharmacist nearby so that you're both on the same page as far as what will be happening in the compounding hood moving forward. So you're going to take off all of the wrapping that is over the bottles um, and then you're going to clean that with isopropyl alcohol. That will help reduce the contamination uh, that, are, that may be on the outside of the bottle and it does not leave any residue. Um, so you don't have to worry about tracking anything else into the clean room. So we're going to take all the items that we need, place them in a bin, and then um, we're going to make sure that we have our labeling and all the documentation that we need as well. We're going to place that in the bin. We're going to bring that into the clean room with us. Then you can take your medications and you can introduce them to the sterile hood and just be aware of what kind of hood you're working in, whether it's a horizontal flow or a vertical flow, because when you clean your workstation and you introduce the medications, you want each medication to have a clean, filtered flow of air um, in the workstation. So make sure you're staying within the six inches um, of all the walls or um, the back filter to make sure that you're creating the optimum clean space to work with. And if you kind of stick with these guidelines, it will help you reduce contamination, it'll help keep things simple, and it'll increase productivity in the pharmacy. Hopefully that helps. So before we start compounding, I did want to point out a couple um, key points here on our products. So I'm looking here at critical sites. Um, so I'll go ahead and show those to you. On the bag, our critical site is where the needle's going to go in here. And then I kind of, as I'm working, I actually want this site, I'm going to alcohol it so it's sterile. I need it to be hitting, the air to be hitting that site. With our vial, our critical area here is this rubber stopper. That's where the needle will go in, so also our critical site. And then that's okay for the air to just hit it this way, making sure nothing's blocking the air. And next our ampule, critical site. Um, it's just this whole area we need to swab. It's not really a critical site, but more of what I want to show you here is how we're going to break the ampule and use a filter needle here. So at this point, I'll go ahead and break it. Usually there's a dot, which this one does not have. That's okay. Um, you will put that dot opposite of your thumb. So if the dot was here, my thumb's here, and I'm putting my index finger here, and I would break it there, like that. So now this constantly needs to be exposed to air because now it's open. And I'm just gonna show you a filter needle and how it's different from a normal needle. Um, and we would use a filter needle to withdraw anything in here because now there might be glass shards in there. Once it's pulled into our syringe, we would take this, the needle off, the filter needle off, and replace it with a normal needle. So I have gone ahead and applied the filter needle, it's a bit long, onto my syringe to draw out um, the solution from the ampule. So I'll go ahead and do that now. It's a little bit different technique using an ampule than a vial with a rubber stopper. So you can just kind of making sure that you're not hitting the edges with the needle. You can go straight in. And then I like to put the bevel in this corner as I tilt it. This just allows me to get 
the most as I pull out the most liquid. So I'm going to try to just go ahead and draw up the whole vial or the whole ampule. And see the angle I'm working at here? Just allows me to get all that out of there and into my syringe. At this point, I can no longer use this filter needle syringe to inject into anything. We need to get rid of this. It might have contaminants or glass in there. So now I need to put on a fresh needle before I inject this syringe. And now it's ready to be injected into a bag or whatever product we're going to be using. what now it's time to compound um, so I have everything ready as we discussed before I have my bin with my label that I'm going to go off of to see if I have my proper bag and my proper drug and I need to make sure I have enough drug in here so they don't run out <clears throat> so there's a couple of steps that I need to do to prepare uh, my workstation I will go ahead and alcohol, some wipes, and just kind of clean my products as I bring them into the hood. Remember our critical site, we want to make sure the air is hitting that. And as I'm coming in and out of the hood, I'm not sterile at this time, but that's okay. We'll get sterile before we mix. So I also have my syringe, I need an alcohol pad, and also a needle. Before those touch the bottom bench surface, I want to spray those as well. So everything is now clean. So I'm going to go ahead and prepare my supplies. I will alcohol the top of the vial at this point, as well as my critical site on the bag letting it be exposed to the air from the HEPA filter. I need to prepare my syringe, being cautious that I'm not in the way of my vial or my bag. And keep in mind that I'm working six inches into my hood, something that we always want to make sure that we're not too far out. So here you'll notice I use the peel and present technique. I peeled the wrappers off my syringe and needle. We never want to pop through. That will have um, paper particles kind of exposed to all our workspace and we want to minimize that as much as we can. Also notice I'm putting my trash off to the furthest side possible so it's not in my work area. At this time, everything's ready to go, but I need to make sure my hands are clean. And after I spray my hands, I do not want to come out of the hood. That's why we need to have everything prepared and ready to go at this point forward. So my label calls for two and a half mLs of my heparin solution. We're making a heparin bag today. Now I know before I go ahead and put my syringe into this vial that I need to draw up air into my syringe. So I'm pulling back two and a half mLs of air that I will now put into my vial. I'm going to go bevel up on the needle and this rubber stopper has a nice little circle. I'm going to go right in the middle of it, 45 degrees, and then down at 90. I'm now able to flip this over push my air in to, minim, um, to equalize the pressure in the vial. And as you can see, I still need this air to be hitting this critical site. I cannot block it. That's wrong. I need to kind of be able to hold my vial and my syringe to be exposing to the air. That is one of the hardest things to do when making IVs. Another thing that you need to keep in mind is making sure the needle inside the vial is hitting liquid because I don't want to be drawing up air. So it looks like we're good on this end. 
and I'm going to pull out about two and a half. I also want to make sure I don't have any bubbles. Kind of hit or flick and get those bubbles out of the way. And now when I pull back to two and a half cc's, I have no bubbles. It looks beautiful. And at this point, I can go ahead as a pharmacist inject into the bag. If you're a technician at this point, you need to use the scoop technique and show your pharmacist the drug and the amount you're pulling up. Since I'm a pharmacist at this time, I know that I have enough drug. I've double checked myself. I can go ahead and shoot to the critical side of the bag, making sure it's still hitting the air. Okay, so we'll go ahead and, as you can see, go into the rubber stopper of the bag, making sure that the needle does not hit the plastic edges. I'm going to go in. Also notice I'm not touching the plunger at any time during this. All right, our bag is made. Instead of recapping our syringe and our bag is fully made, I can actually come out of the hood now. So I'll go ahead and dispose of this right away into my sharps container. Sorry about the noise. And I wanna make sure I now label the bag it looks empty now, but there's actually a drug in it, so let's label it. And I can hand the bag, the, labeled, uh, the label, and the drug to the, to the pharmacist if I'm a technician, or now I'm just ready to go ahead and check it and have it go out. Uh, before I wrap up here, I need to make sure that my area is clean. Uh, your trash that you had can go in the garbage. Do not put this in the sharps container. It's a big no-no. And then I'll go ahead and just wipe down the area um, for the next person to come in or before I come and do my batch or my next product that I need to prepare. All right. Well, that's the, it. That's the end of making a product. Um, I hope you had as much fun as I did.